You found the Steel National Championship Air Races presented by Reno Tahoe. No event like it in the world, the Steel National Championship Air Races. And right now we're about to get a chance to ride along and watch the world's fastest motorsport in action. This is the fastest of our seven classes here. This is the Jet class. This is Jet Bronze action right now. Six laps, 47 miles. Some great, great competitors on display this time around. And we are getting very near race time. We'll have all our planes. We'll introduce them for you and the pilots. And then we'll get them up in the air, lined up, and descend upon the course for a, another great jet race today, our, our second of the day. Tommy, this is going to be exciting. We've got uh, five L29s in this class and one L39. We've talked about those earlier today, but this class is dominated by the Aero Vodahodi training aircraft. The L39 you see there uh, next to the end on the right of your screen, it was a trainer designed to replace the L29, which the other five are. And uh, you can see that is one of our pace planes that's departing there. That is uh, the Phenom jet that is uh, flown by actually a California congressman. What? And uh, serves as a, a pie, as a pace plane for us. So how about that? Yeah, it's a very, very great setup. We have lots of uh, coordination and communication and uh, a congressman, uh, California congressman hey, Jay Obernolte on there. And then uh, there you see uh, Rob McCormick in the, the number six. Uh, and I think that's uh, not quite who that is, Tommy. So we'll uh, we'll look. So the Phenom jet is departed as our pace plane. And then the uh, L-39 is Cyril Whipley out of Zoot, Switzerland in race 73. It's on your screen now, Tommy. He's our number two qualifier. The black and white camouflage qualified at 391 right. miles an hour. That first one we saw a second ago was Matt Conklin, who's our number one yes. qualifier just yes. ahead of this one. There's our number three. Yeah, Nathan Harnagel from Friendswood, Texas, a veteran of these jet races here at Reno. The Spirit of Freedom, race 55. And coming up behind him will be another silver L29. Look a lot like that. There it is there, race one. Bob McCormick out of Sacramento in the jet he calls Athena. And then that's, there we uh, go, yeah. That's Vertigo, race 23. Joe Swindle. Another L29 silver one. So lastly, the blue one, race 61, Tom. Yeah, Tabby Camilleri, international entry, all the way from uh, Bathurst. New South Wales in Australia, Miss Independence, race 61. Well, there's our field of six plus a place plane, Tommy. So we'll talk a little bit about jet class. Again, you mentioned these are the fastest racers we have. They fly our largest eight mile course. They're going to fly six laps. Speeds up near 500 miles an hour in the A class here in the bronze. We're going to be closer to 400, maybe just a little under 400 uh, miles an hour at these aircraft. They're going to take off that you just saw. They're going to form up on that pace plane. They're going to circle behind Mount Peavine here behind us and then line up line abreast and head back down the chute and head into our course that we see on the screen here now, Tommy. That is our largest eight-mile course. You can see the uh, pylons popping in there. And as we get close to the start, the aircraft form up line abreast on the pace plane, as you see here on the screen. Pace plane in red. The other aircraft are wingtip to wingtip. They have to stay in those lanes straight ahead till they get to the guide pylon. Now, they can accelerate out ahead of each other, but they can't turn in front of each other until they get to that guide pylon. And now here we get another great look at the Microsoft Flight Simulator for the Reno Air Races Expansion Pack. Courtesy of that, you see the virtual lap up there in the corner. What a great look here from Race 8 with a third-person view of what it looks like to fly a jet at 500 knots, 500 miles an hour, right around 50 feet over the desert, Tommy. Here's a look inside of one of our jet racers at a previous race here to give you an idea of how fast the sand and the rocks and the sagebrush flies by your face as you're 50 feet off the deck out there going speeds approaching 500 miles an hour. And we see the class dominated by these L-29s and L-39s. You know, these in the, in the Cold War, in the Warsaw Pact, they were in need of an entry jet-level trainer, and that's where the L-29 came from. And then eventually in the 60s, the Czech 
Boston-based company, Aerobo to Hody, produced the L39 to replace the L29. These are readily, somewhat readily available on the free market now, uh, and that's where a lot of these racers have it. You see so many of them civilian-owned and race, just like you see on the screen here at 50 feet over the desert here in Reno. Here we go, Tommy. They're uh, they're formed up, and they're coming at us from over our right shoulders here. They're coming down the slot. We talked earlier about they got to stay in the lane until they get to the guide pylon, and here they come. Race is on. The pace plane is pulled up. We have jet racing in Reno, Tommy. Once again, this is bronze class racing. Matt Conklin, the number one qualifier, starting position number one out in front as we watch it right now, early on. And he had the pole position because of that qualifying, as you said, Tommy, and there he is right up, uh, right up front moving on the way around the course. And you see the, uh, the L39 of uh, Cyril Whitfleet out of Switzerland, right there in second. Mm -hmm. He's beginning, looks like he's trying to track him down. Looks like Cyril's getting some uh, speed built up as he descends down out of the foothills into the north end of the Lemon Valley. And now they're making that left turn, coming around pylon number six, headed southbound in the Valley of Speed. And the Jets truly do bring the speed to the Valley of Speed here in Reno, Tommy. Those first two planes qualified within two miles an hour of one another should be a great matchup. Yeah, and it looks like uh, Whitley, race 73, is beginning to make a little bit of ground on our leader. They're definitely close here as they're uh, making their way around the final pylons, headed back for home uh, to the steel start finish line. The two of them are uh, going to be jockeying back and forth. It looks like Whitley is just uh, watching and, and uh, stalking right now behind Conklin. Not yielding at all, staying right on the tail of Matt Conklin and Sluggo, the L29 Delphin. And I think he had a good run on him coming around those first couple of pylons, and then you saw him had to pull up. I think he had a little bit more overtake than he thought. You got to pass on the outside, and he had to pull up and pull out, and he lost a little bit of momentum on that as they go now around the guide pylon. But he'll probably get that momentum built back up again as, uh, as they come around. Uh, headed through the far north end of the course. And uh, you can see he's dropped back a little bit. It may take some uh, time to get that momentum built up back again, Tommy. We're in the second of six laps that all of our six racers will be going through. Third place now is Harnagel, race 55. Nathan Harnagel from Texas. Don't forget, Tommy, we talked about the minimum altitude is 50 feet. And as they come through these final pylons here, headed for the home stretch, they have a maximum altitude of 250 feet. And that's all about containing the energy if something were to go awry to protect our fans. There you can hear some of our uh, race radio co communication where the pilots are talking to each other, telling each other, I'm coming around on your right or above you or whatever. And you'll hear that off and on throughout the race as we get to listen into the fantastic communication going on. There's one and two. It's Whitley considerably higher right now than Matt Conklin. Yeah, I think one of the strategies I've seen him do the last couple laps, Tommy, is he comes up high on that far east end of the course, and then he's trying to trade that altitude for energy as he descends over the home pylon and then continues to descend into the north end of the Lemon Valley as he goes around the uh, far north pylons of four, five, and six. And he's trying to convert that energy to speed. Has not yet successfully done that. It's been about that same margin for the majority of the race so far. He just can't make any significant headway into, into Matt Conklin's line yeah, there. Yeah, Conklin and Sluggo did qualify at two not two miles an hour faster and seems to be holding that uh, here pretty steady. But now as they're going down the valley of speed, the angle's a little deceptive. It looks like he might be closer than he really is, but he did gain a little bit of ground on those uh, last few turns. What a great shot right there as they make the turn back to the steel home pylon start finish area. And they are halfway through their race at this point right now, one and two. Race six and race 73 sluggos. And a Subito, two L29s, Whipley and Conklin. So there's a good com comparison of the uh, one aircraft that relieved the other in operational training. The uh, L39 on the right side of your screen was the later model built in the 60s, built to relieve the, uh, the aging L29. But here in Reno in racing, the L29s have a little bit of an advantage. What a great paint scheme on that L39, though. But here you see the red and white of race six, Matt Conklin out first. Race uh, 73 from Subito is uh, stalking him. And then here we see some of our other competitors coming through the uh, guide pylon and now back to our leaders. It looks again like Woodfley is really trying to make some hay. That's about the only place he's gaining on him is as they drop into the Valley of Speed, Tommy. 
Looks very close right now, but uh, once they get turned around, we'll get to see a, get a better picture once they get uh, wings level. Yeah, don't forget that uh, the leader has the pole, the pole position or the inside track, and, and uh, he's going to have to pass him on the outside. That's the longer way around. But he's getting closer. Yes, he is. Each time he comes by us, he's just a little bit closer. And he sees the laps counting down now. We are in lap five. Uh, this next time by, they'll get the white flag for the for the last lap, Tommy. And I'm sure now it's now or never. Right, less uh, than two laps to get the job done. And being here in the bronze class, winning here today could possibly get you going fast enough to move up to the silver race tomorrow. What a great shot as they fly through the foothills in the sagebrush. Got Harnagel, McCormick, and Swindle. Third, fourth, and fifth. Our leaders are definitely tightening up, Tommy, now as they head uh, around the north part of the course, the farthest north of our large eight mile course. And this is where Whitley in uh, race 73 has been able to make some ground as he makes those last turns around pylon six and heads south into the Valley of Speed. And we got a good race back in the pack there coming by the guide pylon. And now back to our leaders. Look at that, Tommy. It looks oh, like they are neck up. and neck. Mm -hmm. See what he could do around this last pylon heading for home. White flag, white flag. There you hear the white flag, Tommy. They are neck and neck. We'll see if Whipley in race 73 can make some final moves on this last lap. It has been a cat and mouse game with these two all the way around this afternoon. And uh, it looks like his, some of that momentum might have uh, slowed just a little bit there on the far eastern part of the course as they head back into the foothills. Yeah, he had it very, very tight there as, uh, as they passed the steel start finish pylon just moments ago. But this is the last lap. And if Whipley's got anything left, any sort of ploy that he could take, this, this is the time to uh, put it into action. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, what, what he's got left because he certainly gave it all that last lap yeah. as he went through the north part. You watch him here now. He's kind of settled back. I don't know if he's just lost the momentum or if he's just decided to protect his equipment for tomorrow. Uh, but definitely seems to be kind of pacing the leader now, Matt Conklin, in race six. Now, Conklin gives him a little bit of an edge there. Did you see that? Conklin kind of flew up high mm -hmm, as he, he did. came around pylon number six. But Conklin may be trying to just trade some altitude for speed just to hold him off. But here comes race 73. Whiffley's making one more run at it. One last turn, Tommy. Oh, boy. Here they come. One more pylon. This is pylon number nine. They're coming around right there. They're going to roll flag, wings checkered level. Flag. Checkered flag. There we are, Tommy, of unofficial one and two. Matt Conklin, Boise, Idaho, race number six, your unofficial winner right there. And there we see uh, race 61, Tammy Camilleri in that shot. And now we're back to uh, coming across, uh, I believe that's Vertigo, Swindell. Arnagel and McCormick have finished at this point. Here comes Camilleri. There comes Camilleri. Race 61, finishing fifth. And then behind her in sixth. That's race 23. That's Swindell, I believe. Yeah, Vertigo. Yeah, sorry about that. Got those two mixed up coming around the corner, but that's because they're going so fast, that's so right. low, that's Tommy. That's the Let's... fastest motorsport in the world. That's right. right. Let's look back at our start. We get to see from the beginning, we had a two aircraft race up front, and there you see Whitfley and Conklin. Conklin had the pole position. He held that, and like uh, is often the case with closed course pylon racing, to pass them, you got to go on the outside. So the shortest, quicker route is obviously that place to be on the inside. And that's what Matt Conklin enjoyed. And now he didn't really make any mistakes all day to give Whitley any chance to get no, by. Absolutely. That's uh, sometimes what all the competitors behind them, starting position number one, are hoping for. Just get a little window open. And he did not leave any window open for them. Yeah, he never did. Flew a very tight, very consistent race, which is what it takes to do that. And then uh, the whole day, Cyril Whipley in race 73 in Subito was just stalking him all the way around. And it got close a couple times. And, but those aircraft are both very evenly matched. They, they qualified within a couple knots of each other. Uh, and we saw that play out throughout the entire race. And here they are on the white flag lap. We're going to watch this one last lap where he tries one last time, especially up north there, to make his way around and make one last run at him. But he just didn't have the momentum. Here you see him coming by our pylon cam as they go by pylons eight and nine. Back to home, and here's the finish, Tommy. There we go, that was the checkered flag and the winner. Matt Conklin, this is Sluggo. Uh, owner is Joe Gano, Vipers of Delaware. 
and we just had a, a really nice ride. Uh, came out here first time, rookie, learned everything. I knew about racing this course on Microsoft Flight Simulator, so uh, good stuff. This is the first time I've been here. Oh man, it was, it was just nervous energy, ready, waiting, you know, like sitting in the starting gates multiple times and essentially uh, getting turned down or told to shut down when we're sitting in the jets, already going, the viz dropped. So it was just great to get the blue skies and get out there today. So good stuff.